Good afternoon, Cherries fans. It's myself and Tom outside Dean Court on this Tuesday where Scott Parker has been sacked. He's left the club and we are currently without a manager. We're sitting outside of the relegation zone, but you know what? Speaking personally, there's a feeling of relief from me a little bit, mate, I've got to say. Yeah, I think that's the word I'd use, mate. A um, bit relieved the way it was going. Don't think it was sustainable. Um, the, the, yeah, the way it was going, it was just, it, yeah, it probably feels a bit messy now that we haven't got a manager, we've got a deadline in a few days, but it was only going to get messier, in my opinion. The way he was coming out was clear that him and the, the board and the owners didn't have the same value and beliefs of the football club. And regardless of what happens on the pitch, because anyone watching who thinks it's because we lost 9-0, it isn't. Hmm. Um, regardless of what happens on the pitch, you've got to be aligned with the people above you. The whole club needs to be aligned. We've always said, you know, I put a tweet out earlier, together anything as possible. We're so far from together with this manager right now. So I'm relieved, mate. It's, it's not ideal, but yeah, I, I am relieved because I just think we weren't going in the right direction with this guy. It feels like there's some miscommunication along the way. And I've said, is it that or is it something else? Because look, at the end of the day, in January, when he needed the personnel to get us over the line, he got that. He got five players, most of which are now surplus to requirements. Do you think he made it clear that these are the players that are just needed to get us over the line, but after that, I will need other personnel? Or do you think that the board thought, actually, these might do a job? There, there does seem to be some yeah. te- a lack of tessellation here. Yeah, because you feel like if, if Scott had said, I'll, I'll need funds and this squad ain't going to be good enough, etc., etc., the board would have said, well, you're not going to get much. And he wouldn't have even started the season as manager. So, yeah, definitely some cross wires there so to speak um, I just he's got to back himself as a coach more I mean if he, uh, what does he expect with Bournemouth uh, what, what does he expect and he's got previous he's done it at Fulham fell out with the owners they've all been more than us um, this is, they've literally written it for us they said you know you wait he'll fall out with the owners and he'll, he'll leave you in a bit of a mess which, he's, which he has done um, yeah really weird one it, it does feel like I think the timing of it it probably wasn't planned but I think they've obviously had a chat with what he's been saying in the media and it's come to a head and they thought, you know, and I, I respect the people at the top for saying these are our values, this is our ethos. And if you're not aligned to it, we're going to have to go elsewhere. Mm. And I, I'm, I'm on board with that all the time. One of the things that we thought was a strength of his was his man management skills. And look, let's face it, we've gone up to the Premier League before with a squad that is less good than what we got now. Certainly got less experience, uh, you know, less good, I say technically, man mm. for man. I think that even Tommy Elphick himself said that the team were a team of misfits. Yeah, absolutely. But when they came together, they came together really well and we finished fairly comfortably 16th and Eddie Howe got every last drop mm. out of every single player. At the moment, we've got a squad that's technically good. We've got some Premier League experience there, but He's doing the opposite and throwing them under the bus. Yeah, let's, let's not forget that when we first went up, we lost Callum Wilson, Tyrone Mings and Max Gradle to long-term injuries. Um, yeah, talking about the depth and stuff. And we all agree that we probably need more defenders. But because of the Mings injury, I think Bailey Cargill was our fourth choice in the first Premier League season. So that says a lot. Um, yeah, and we had you know, Glenn Murray leading the line on his own a lot of the time. So, and we were never under-equipped there. And we had, I think we had three players with Premier League experience that time. I think it was three, it might be two. And now we've got over ten. Um, so yeah it, it doesn't help Scott that we know that we've had League One players that mm. haven't been under equipped and the coach has got the best out of them so it doesn't sit well when you've got the manager coming out as he is it can't be good for the players you can't be I'm so proud of them one minute and say they're not good enough the next mm. um, so yeah I can't imagine there's too much harmony within the dressing room certainly isn't upstairs so I think as much as this is going to be a bit messy for a while I think it's probably the best thing for the football club and everyone that's involved in the club, to be honest. And as we said at the start of the show, mate, I, I felt relief when I first heard it. I said on the live show that we did this morning, though, you look at his CV in black and white, it's actually quite good. Is he, it? He took Fulham up. He, he nearly kept him up. He then left for whatever reason. We know, but that, he doesn't put that on his CV. Joins Bournemouth. Hardly gets any cash to start off with. Has to use a lot of academy players. We go unbeaten for 14 or so games. I think it was November first time we lost. Mm. Yeah, we had a blip. He got us up, obviously with the help of the board. Premier League, first game of the season. No one expects us to win. We won. Then we lose at Man City. We lose against Arsenal. And then we lose against Liverpool, albeit that was a humbling, horrible defeat. But hasn't exactly not worked out like he thought it probably would have, like most AFC Bournemouth fans Mm. would have. But we're underlining the fact that it's not 
what's happening on the pitch that's you know that's the issue really. I think what he's what he's proved is he he can get one of the best squads in the championship out. Whether you see that as a massive success or not, that's up to you. He's still getting the job done both times he's been in the championship, but he has always had the best squad in that championship, uh, or at least one of the top two. Um, he scraped it with Fulham in the playoffs, remember. But um, in the Premier League, he's shown unless he's got loads and loads and loads of cash, he ain't good enough. So, and, there's, there, and I put this on a tweet, there's, there's a lot of short-termism with him. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of short-term decisions, i.e. Siriki Dembele being like turfed out already. It's obviously clear that conversations happened which, where Scott Park has expressed to Siriki that, you know, you did great for us, you scored a couple of crucial goals, but we won't need you. And, um, yeah, he's, I, think he's, yeah, I think he's just shown that he's a, he's a capable manager to a certain point and then he needs more resources. And I'm not being funny, but falling out with two owners when you've had two jobs doesn't look great. I don't know who next is going to appoint him, but he ain't going to get a club that's going to smash loads of cash. So I don't know what he's going to do. Is he going to get a championship job, one of the best teams of the championship? Say, for example, I don't know, just, just off the top of my head, it's not going to happen, but Watford sat there, manager, just say, and he goes there, he'll probably get him up, and then he'll moan that he ain't got any money and he'll get sat again. I, I don't really see what he's doing for himself, to be honest. As you say, he's got two promotions under his belt, but he's also got two owners that have said the same things and um, yeah don't look great I don't really know what he wants he's got a team in the Premier League that have a capacity of just over 10,000 he expects to be able to splash the cash he's, he's how about a, show you're a good coach mate he's after a champagne lifestyle with lemonade money yeah good show. yeah exactly he, he's expecting Waitrose products and shopping at Audi do you know what I mean what, what is it I don't really understand what he expects but Audi products <laughs> sometimes get <laughs> should, we, yeah, should yeah. we carry this on yeah, supermarket yeah. of the year or whatever but they're, you know, they're actually not bad. And He's got the right people in charge. Yeah. He's got the right people in charge, exactly. mate. And uh, yeah, you don't want to always harp back to Eddie, but you know, we've, we've seen it, haven't we, up close and personal. So yeah, I think it was the, the right thing to do, mate. i would be interested to see where his next job is, and it'd be interesting to see if we hear anything from him um, over the next few days, to be honest. But Did he ever get it? Do you think he ever no. got it, being no. a Bournemouth fan? Like I said, adversity runs through the fabric of the club. Uh, when he was uh, you know, going through adverse situations, it's everyone but him. Yeah, I've never, yeah, I've never seen the guy blame himself. Um, we lost, we lost nine 0 and not once did he blame himself. I don't, yeah, I don't. As, as I say, I don't know him as, as a person. Um, I just look at him and think that what we have at this football club and him are so so opposite. Mm. They're so opposite in their values. So it wasn't going to work. I just don't think from the day he walked into the football club, I don't think he got it, and it's come to a head now um, because of this window. So. Yeah, it's probably best for all parties, mate. We'll see what happens with him, but I'm hoping now we can just move onwards. I think it's going to be a good atmosphere here now. Yeah, yeah. A bit of a siege mentality, which has always served us well in the past. So, and even last season, to be fair, and to, to Scott's credit as well, of course, but everyone in the club, when it comes to the point of, hang on, Forrester coming here, we might not get automatic. We got the siege mentality, didn't we? And we got the job done. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens, mate. But I'm, yeah, I, I'm more positive going into to the game tomorrow than I than I was before this uh, announcement. Nice, nice little appearances on Sky Sports News this afternoon, mate. Media, media star. Jeff's on the BBC, so I think I'm on Five Live tomorrow morning at six twenty yeah. or something. But you know what? It's um, and we, you know, look, we don't pretend we represent the opinions of the fans, of not. but. If you want to comment on this video, we'll read every one and we'll try to reflect that in what we say when we speak to the press. I think we're doing Meridian and South today tonight, so you'll see either one of us on there um, at that point in time as well. So it's just really interesting to hear what people have got to say. Fulham fans as well that, you know, they can't help but say, I told you so. But you know what? They, you know, they were right. And, you know, it's a, it's a learning curve for us. And what's good, though, is that for future clubs, it's surely going to be a learning curve for them as well. Who next, Tom? Oh, Sean Dyche. I mean, he's going to be the only favourite. <laughs> Big Sam. Um, Dyche is an interesting one. I said to you, on one hand, you go, he knows how to do it with a small budget um, and he knows how to keep a team up in the in the Premier League. Equally, if I'm Sean Dyche, do I think, how long's Rogers going to be at Leicester? How long's Gerrard going to be at Villa? How long's Lampard going to be at Everton? Will I wait around, potentially? There's these, there's a lot of random murmurings about Nutson, I think his name is, from Bodo Glint, who apparently we rate highly, but obviously, I mean, I didn't know him five minutes ago, so let's, let's see. There's a, f a few things you could do within the club. You know, see how Gary Neal gets on. We go down the Cooper route. Um, have we been burnt with Tyndall in the past? Maybe. Maybe that'll be on the board's mind as well, that we tried that and it didn't quite work. But um, they'll, they'll just, as long as we get someone that's, as I keep saying, we get someone in that's aligned to the views of the board and the fans and we're all together, then, um, then whatever happens, happens, mate. Um, but yeah, I'm... I'm intrigued to see what route we go down, but I don't think they'd be planning for a new manager. I think this has come to a head very, very quickly. Mm. 
But in terms of our survival chances, it's, it's probably a good thing that it's been dealt with straight away. It's clear the relationship was so fractious that they had to go to get it sorted yeah. as soon as possible. And It's funny, isn't it? Tyndall Tind- always said, I never left the top six as a manager. Parker said I was never in the relegation zone yeah, in the Premier yeah. League. So, yeah, it's funny how it works. Can't wait, can't wait. Okay, anyway, yeah, let us know what you think in the comments. Yeah. And look, appreciate all the comments we've had uh, over the past, well, not even 24 hours, <laughs> not, not, not even 12 hours, but thank you so much. And if yeah. you're a new subscriber, we truly appreciate it. We'll aim to bring as much raw fan reaction as possible. And look, tomorrow we're playing Wolves, so there is going to be a preview coming out on this channel, but not only that, yeah, there's a game to play. There's a match day vlog as well, so we'll try to gauge the atmosphere as much as we possibly can, yeah. and um, hopefully it'll be a good one for us. So, yeah, see you in the next video, yeah? Oh, Jerry's. Oh, <laughs>